Writing a strong email can mean the difference between a response or fading into oblivion, into the dark, abyss. Okay, maybe, maybe not that, that bad. But it is kind of important to write a good, solid, strong email. And if there's one thing I know, it's how to write a good, strong email. And well, how do I do that? That's a good question. I'm going to tell you in the video right now. Let's make a right, left, you. Do you have what it takes to make a right, left, to you? Do you? What's up, good people? I'm Thomas J. Beleza, and welcome to my video. If this is your first time on my channel and you want to learn how to succeed in entertainment, then subscribe by hitting the bell icon so you don't miss out. There are a few types of emails out there. Some examples, business, familiar, general, and personal. There are many types of emails out there. A few examples, business, sales, familiar, and general, to name a few. Emails, specifically introduction emails, are doorways into a potential relationship. These are first time hellos or inquiries into doing something or starting a conversation. And occasionally you might find yourself introduced by a third party introduction. For today, I am going to solely focus on an introduction email specifically from you to them. This is an email that you are writing cold to someone you have never, ever, ever met before. The first rule to a strong email are three paragraphs only. Each paragraph represents an important aspect to your message. Paragraph one is always about them and their successes. Do some due diligence and research, research, research. Figure out what they have done to succeed, how they got there, and then sincerely praise them on their efforts. Paragraph two is about you and your wants. Be straightforward with what you want. And if you can include a forced choice, I would do so here at the end of paragraph two. Paragraph three is about them and their future. As per your due diligence and research, 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 this is where you see what's coming up. Are they working on a new project? Do they have an award coming up? Have they been nominated, basically? Sincerely praise them and wish them good luck on what they are doing. And to pound in the importance of your due diligence to research, research, and research. Do it. Research the person of interest. It will help you articulate yourself and basically finely tune your email so it hits home emotionally. And once you have all this information and you write it out, you want to go back over it and add your personality, add your brand message. If you're humorous, it's okay to be humorous. If you're serious or if you're very articulate, if you're elegant, if you're a poet, if you're a comedian, if you're an actor, and you have a very specific personality, place that in the email. Very important. Because a good, strong email is only a good, strong email if you are being true to yourself, if you're being natural, and of course, you're taking your time. That's right, take your time. There is no rush. They have never heard from you before. So it's not about getting it out Monday, it's about making sure you do your research, writing the email out, then going through it and combing it with your personality and making it nice, styling it, you know. I personally like the ponytail, but some people like the duck or the mane or the 80s like wave thing that never happened. And to conclude, this rule stands and is extremely valuable. Every paragraph, paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, all must have a minimum of three sentences or a maximum of four sentences. Very important. The first paragraph, the second, and the third are equally important to that email. If you put three sentences in the first paragraph, four in the second one, because you know your wants are more important than anything else in the world, and only one in the third one to say goodbye, hey, may all your successes come to you. That's a terrible email. Place some time and energy into this email. Three to four, three to four, three to four sentences. These emails flow nicely. They start with them, they hear your needs, and you end it with praise. Helpful tip! A forced choice is a wonderful tool to have. Basically, your recipient 
will be able to only choose one of two options. This forces the human brain to make a choice based on what you present. For example, what works best for you, Monday or Tuesday at 2 p.m.? Now clearly they can say neither and just no, none of that works. Or they could potentially just not even respond. True. However, if they are already emotionally invested in your well-crafted email, utilizing the three paragraph rules, they will respond and they will make a choice. It also takes the pressure over them to come up with a solution. Because if you wrote, hey, I'm available, you know, all week, anytime, any day, you, you tell me, you tell me what works for you, all right? Yes, whatever, whatever works for you. You then take time out of your day, your busy, hard day, and get back to me, the person you don't know, and you let me know what day works for you. Good? Good. Finally, let me end with this little nugget of information. A little a wisdom, some pearls I am throwing at you. Mm, pearls. When it comes to your email, the first thing they see is your subject line. Give your email an informative, an interesting and a unique subject line. This will potentially build intrigue and inspire them to open said email. Thank you for watching this video and supporting these traveling adventures of a resilient entertainer. <laughs> Please like, a comment, and share the video along with subscribing for future content. If you have questions, let me know in the comments below. And as always, don't work too hard, but be productive. And remember, to look around at the people beside you. Because you want to work together so you can grow together and therefore rise together. Do you have what it takes to make a right, left, Oh, man. <sighs> I'm stuck in the falsetto. I have to go to the doctor now. Bye. Oh dear.